Hey guys, Comet here. Welcome to episode 11 in my Spaced Out series. Now in the last episode, I got this Dreco farm up and running here with this layer of hydrogen at the top, and that way they can regrow their skills, and then it has this layer of oxygen down at the bottom so that their food source can grow. And there was a suggestion from Eric here to make my Dreco farm skinnier and taller. That way there's more hydrogen at the top and the Drecos can spend more time in the hydrogen. And yes, that makes sense, but then I would break my four tile limit, four tile height limit for each floor. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be enough to keep my Atmo suits repaired. If I start running into problems, then I'll just add another farm down here. Now, I also was sent down a rabbit hole when I built this solar panel pyramid here, um, in case you missed it. I'll leave a card in the top right where I go over all of the math behind this solar pyramid and power storage. So using the information from that video, this is 71 tiles wide, so I can safely draw about 3.3 kilowatts from all of these panels per cycle, and I would need 30 batteries in order to store all of this power that's not used during the peak hours. So I think I'm going to start on that right now. I'm going to make a better battery box. So right now I only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 13, 14, 15, 16. I only have 17 batteries, so I need to double this. And I said I wanted to try and put the battery box up in space up here. So I'm thinking I'll try and do something like this. And then if I can fit all 30 batteries in this area, then I'll give this a try. So this is, let's see, 45 tiles wide. If we divide that by 2, that's 23. Or I can fit 23 batteries there. Or, well, if I have room for a ladder, then only 22. This one has 37, so yeah, they'll be able to fit here. And if I want to go for a double, double tower, maybe I don't need to go all the way to the edges there. So this, this box, is 29. Say so we put a ladder in the middle with some space for a steam turbine so I can delete some of the heat. Nah, I don't like the way that looks. Maybe if the steam turbine is up here. This is kind of how I used to do it the old way. So I can fit 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 batteries in this box. Now I'm not too happy with the way this looks yet. Now if I do this, this would work. Let me actually just try for max coverage here. I want to overbuild it a little. Or, well, a lot. I can't help it. So the steam turbine can fit up here towards the top. I think something like this would fit perfectly. Now I just need to get all of the drywall in so I don't lose any of the hydrogen I'm going to be putting in here to space. And then I need to throw in some shift plates here. I do have enough steel still for an aqua tuner. So I'll throw that in. And then I have to route the plumbing. Let's see. I can go up around this way and over around this way. And then I can switch to radiant piping here. And I guess I will... Let's see. Ah, but then I have no way of cooling the steam turbine, actually. If I drop this whole section down so that it has a flush top and put the steam turbine in here, then it can share the atmosphere of the batteries and be cooled off in the same way that the batteries are. Yeah, I like that. So I'll put the aqua tuner back and the plumbing. Yeah, so it can go in up here at the top, then go around into the aqua tuner, then into the buffer, back around this way to the top of the aqua tuner. So the radiant piping will be here. That will be the in and that will be the out. And then the output from the steam turbine can come right through the center there. And dump, I guess, right there will work. Now we need a thermo sensor, some automation. And I put a filter gate here between the thermo sensor and the aqua tuner. That way it doesn't uh, jerk on and off in case the liquid in the pipe is kind of like right on the threshold to activate the aqua tuner. And I think this is just where I spam batteries all over the place. Now I want to calculate how much heat all of these batteries are going to make to make sure that this aqua tuner and steam turbine can keep up with it. 
cycling the heat and turning it back into power. So one battery will leak 400 joules and it produces 500 DTUs per second. So we just need to add up all of the batteries I plan on putting in here. So one, two, three, four, three, two, four, 25 times two, so 50 batteries. It's going to produce about 25 kilo DTUs, which is more than enough for a single aqua tuner steam turbine setup. And I think I can just route the plumbing kind of through the flooring here. Yeah, that'll work. And then I will put in the buffer right about here and put the bypass in. Ooh, I have my first glossy Dreco here. I could start shearing them for plastic because it's actually taking my dupes quite a while to get up this ladder, go all the way around to get up to build this. And if I had enough plastic to put in the, let's see, where is it? Transit tubes, then they could get things done a lot quicker, especially since I only have nine dupes working. So if I put some space down here and just do a copy of what's up here, then I can get the glossy Dracos moved down into this area. And I guess for the sake of consistency, I don't need this farm here. I can move it down over here. This is becoming my farming section. So I'll have them build this too, and then I'll move the Sweetles from here down over to here. So this is Sweetles. Where are they? Here we go. We want a max of... We'll do six. And we'll auto-wrangle the surplus. So now I will get these guys wrangled up. And deselect Sweetles here. That way they are forced to put them back over here. Alright, so here I want to copy the mealwood plants. And I want this to be glossy Drecos. And then up here, if I auto-wrangle surplus and only have six in here, then they should pick up that glossy Dreco and throw it down here. And the last thing I need to do to get this farm to work is pipe some hydrogen in here. That way this Dreco can regrow its scales. Now I am running low on some refined iron to make all the batteries I want to put in up here. So I'm thinking about Expanding my ladders down here one more layer and getting some more iron Actually, I don't think there's very much iron in that layer. I might need to go two layers There we go So it's going to take my dupes a, a very long time to finish both of these things I have queued up So I think I'm gonna go step away and come back when everything is done All right, I'm back. I watched Deadpool and had a bowl of soup Let's see what kind of progress they've made. So it looks like they're almost done. I think I need to get some water into here though. So to do that, and to make sure nothing ends up on the inside in there, I don't want any debris. I'll bridge in right here. I'm gonna need a pipe to come along this way. I can bridge over the salt water here and then share this output here, I think. That'll work. And then I also went ahead and switched the space access. So instead of having that thing over here, I now have it completely insulated with these transit tube access points. Now I'm also going to need some liquid in this pipe here to act as coolant. And I don't know why I put these bridges in backwards. I just noticed that. So I will flip these around. And then I have some extra power transformers in here. Uh, one will power this aqua tuner, and then the other three give me options for other things I might want to do in space. I don't know what I could use these for, but I figure since I have the space, I might as well put them in. And I don't really want to put any more batteries than this. Because of the power leak, it's better to have as few batteries as absolutely necessary. That way you don't need to spend wattage on keeping these charged, just for them to leak that power as heat. And then you have to deal with the heat somehow. So that's what uh, this steam turbine up here will do. So now, if the temperature in here is ever above, let's see, for water, we can go as cold as 20. 
well, technically I guess you could go down to 14, because the aqua tuner reduces the temperature of the liquid flowing through it by 14 degrees. And if you go any lower than that, then the water's gonna turn into ice and it's gonna break the pipe, so 20 should be fine. And then once I get super coolant, I can go really as low as I want. Alright, it looks like this loop is full, so I will remove this bridge here. And let this chamber in here fill up. Now I can't turn any of these power transformers on to get this aqua tuner to work, because there's no atmosphere in here, it's still a vacuum. Once they finish everything, I'm gonna pipe in some hydrogen through here. I'm going to change the access point from over here, where it used to be, to up here. Then I'm gonna put some drywall here. I have to temporarily remove this solar panel. That way I can fit in a bottle emptier, and I'm gonna get a little bubble of crude oil right here in this tile. And that will act as a liquid lock to this inside portion in here. That way I can start filling it with the hydrogen, and my dupes can still get in and out to build. And it looks like this vent is full now. So I can deconstruct this bridge. And then if I reverse the flow on this bridge over here, like this, then all of the extra water in this pipe should make its way into here. Alright, so let's set this to crude oil. I think I do have some sitting at the bottom of the map down here. I don't remember how I got this. Yeah, there's some bottles of crude oil down here. Now I have to be careful with how much they put here. I just want that tiny little bubble. And then any excess in here, I don't want. So I'm gonna have them mop it up and then I'm gonna break this tile so it just falls onto the ground. So this should be completely enclosed now, so I'll go ahead and connect up the hydrogen here. And now that there's going to be an atmosphere in here, I can go ahead and connect the entire thing up to the power grid. Now I'll get all of this piping out of the way, don't need that anymore. And I'm just waiting on them to bring all of this iron in. Let's see. It's saying I have enough iron. I think it's just because it's all down here at the bottom of the map takes them a while to bring it up to the top. Oh, I guess all of the iron was already here. I just needed my builder to come over here and build this. Okay, where is my builder? It's electrical engineering. Can I get anyone else into electrical engineering? It looks like Stinky's got some extra morale I can use here. Alright, so now I have two people that can build these wires. Let's see if Stinky goes and builds it. Oh yes, perfect. So that starts up the aqua tuner. Okay, so now I'm completely on the new battery box. These batteries are charging. I've removed these batteries here, which means I don't actually need this cooling loop here. I've been thinking about doing this for a little while now anyway. I want to get all of the polluted water into this tank, uh, regardless of its temperature, because then it will be easier to process everything that way. So I don't need it to go through here anymore. So I will get rid of this. And this. So I'm gonna have to get my dupes to break back in here. And I'm gonna go back to using this water as the coolant. And I wanna be very careful not to get any oxygen accidentally sent up to the battery box, so I'm going to pull off of the filter to guarantee that it's only hydrogen. And I've also been thinking about moving the oxygen production down to right here, and then having a clean water tank. Um, but until I get that up and running, I do need to do a little maintenance on this one. And they need to break in here. And now that this looks nice and clean in here, and all of the piping has been converted over, I'm gonna go ahead and block that off, and then come down here, and I wanna set up a permanent oxygen production. So if I leave a little bit of space here so that my dupes can actually walk in between the two buildings here, I can make the new oxygen facility right here. I will put the hydrogen generators made of, I guess, copper's fine, up here, 
Then the electrolyzers will go here, 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 and here. Got the gas pump here, and then the oxygen pumps here. And they'll output towards the bottom. Let's see, this can come straight up into this room here. Or should I have... Okay, yeah, it's gonna come into here. Then it's gonna switch to radiant piping, like that. And so my plan here, the water will come in here to cool off these generators, and then come down this way, cool off the oxygen leaving, and then it will go into the electrolyzers. And everything will be powered with the new better wire on the inside, but I'm still gonna use just the regular heavy watt wire on the outside. That way everything is finalized on the inside. And once I accumulate enough iron, I can go ahead and swap over the outside wire. Now I have to set up the automation. So there's a total of three Atmos sensors. The bottom two plug into these pumps down here, and then the top one plugs into that pump up there. And then the settings on these bottom ones, you want them to run if they are ever above 450. And the top one, if it's ever above 250. So I can seal off this bottom part. And actually, I think I can seal off the whole thing. Now I want to... Well, I can't completely remove this yet. I need to come up with a better way of handling this salt water. So I want to use the the salt water for clean water, and then use the polluted water for the bog buckets. So I'm going to stop with this whole uh, two-step refining process here, and just convert all of the salt water to clean water. Now, that means I'm going to need a water tank, and I guess I can fit it right next to the polluted water tank. And for the sake of consistency, this is 26 tiles wide, so I will make this one 26 tiles wide as well. And then up here is where I can fit the refiners, or the desalinators. So the salt water is going to come straight down and then over to here. And then I'll also clean up this piping here. Don't need that anymore. And by doing it this way, that means I won't need this water sieve anymore. I can just pump out the polluted water straight over to here from the bathrooms. And then all of the clean water can be provided by these desalinators to the bathrooms and to oxygen production. So this, I can actually connect on right there. And then I will get a pump down in this corner. And that will supply all of the water where it needs to go. So I have to reroute the polluted water now in that direction. This pipe can come down this way and connect into here. You can jump over the salt water, and then the polluted water will end up over here. So we'll have clean water, polluted water, and no salt water. Oh! Okay. Well, the salt slush geyser produces brine. Well, that's a little misleading. So all of the water here is going to be increased by 40 degrees, or the temperature is. I see why I did this now. So instead of running the brine straight into the desalinators, what I can do is maybe make a counterflow heat exchange. So the outgoing or the incoming brine can cool off the outgoing water. But that requires a steady flow. So I think my best option now might be to actually just have the brine cool off this area here before then going up to be converted into water. So when a desalinator converts salt water into water, the outgoing water will be the temperature of the salt water, but when it converts brine into clean water, it always outputs 40 degree water, unless the brine was warmer than 40 degrees to begin with. 
So that's a heat generating feature, and I don't really want to generate heat. So I'm going to try and use the coolness of the brine before it gets converted to cool off the final product. And we'll see how well this will work. So the brine will enter the water tank at about negative 7. It's going to cool off the water in here and then be converted into the water that it has to then cool. Okay, so now, this should be good to go. I can... disconnect all of this piping here. We'll get onto the new oxygen production. And I need to vent... this part up here before putting it into the generators. Otherwise, it'll break the generators. All right, so this system seems a lot cleaner than what I had before. And I can remove this monstrosity. And all of this stuff, too, actually. All right, it looks like this has stabilized now, so I will remove this vent here. And redirect all of the hydrogen that way. That means I should be able to seal this up now, and this thing should be completely self-sustaining, given I keep desalinating this brine. And who is starving? Oh, that's not good. Why is Stinky trapped? So this is starting to look pretty good now, but I've noticed that, well, this polluted water is way too cold for these plants. So, what I want to do, the brine is going to have to stop short there, and then I can run the polluted water through the clean water tank to try and soak up some heat before going into the mealwood plants over here. So to do that, I gotta go through there, and I want to bridge that, but I'll put it here instead. So now, the polluted water warms up to 13 degrees before leaving, which is just in range for the mealwood plants. So this system is less interdependent than the old system. The only problem now is that I don't have a way of making any refined metals, but there's a separate build I have planned specifically for that. Alright, so what did I get done in this episode? Well, to start, I put in the battery box to go with the solar panels that I put in in the last episode, complete with built-in cooling. I also restructured the water processing. So now I have a clean water tank and a polluted water tank. And this clean water tank is going to act as like a heat reservoir. So the cold brine that this salt slush geyser produces will cool off this tank and this polluted water over here will also cool off this tank, but it's more important that this polluted water be warmed up by this tank rather than cooling this tank off, uh, but that's just one of the side effects. That way I don't stifle any of my plants over here. I also then had to move the oxygen production facility down to here, so this will produce all of the oxygen for the Atmosuits and for the DHU and it gets its water from the clean water tank now. That means I did have to remove my metal refining that used to be over here, but that's what I want to tackle in the next episode by going over to this planet, pumping in some water here. Now that I have a clean water tank, that should be pretty simple. I can use the water from here then to extract some oil from these oil reservoirs and then pump it back through this teleporter here. So that will get me going on plastic, and it will give me access to petroleum back on the main planet here. Now what I want to do with that petroleum is build a metal refining station that uses petroleum as coolant with some steam turbines on top to recapture that heat and turn it into power. But overall, I think that's pretty decent progress for this episode. I would like to remind everyone about my Discord server. There's a link to it in the description. I have some oxygen not included channels in there. 
Just make sure you click on the little thumbs up when you enter the welcome page. That way you get access to the entire server. If you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing. And if you did enjoy the video, then I would appreciate hitting that like button. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next episode.